Mike Andrew from E D Pizza Company. How the hell are you, my man? Hey, doing well. Thanks, Shelf. Round two. Take two. <laughs> um, what's up, man? So how's everything going for you? I know we're in a crazy time right now, and I want to share kind of from operators' perspective as to how they're maneuvering through the the crazy time that we're in. That doesn't seem like it's gonna end at any point in the near future. So we're I guess this is gonna be the new normal for a while, even though I hate saying that. Yeah, I think you're right there. I mean, it was unexpected. You know, you kind of saw things coming. You really weren't sure what was going to happen. Then all of a sudden, things in our country started ramping up so fast. And, yeah. you know, this new normal took over. And, I mean, we're learning as we, as we go still day by day. It's crazy. I was in uh, San Diego beginning of March, March 1st and 2nd. I was at Social Media Marketing World. And it was kind of like you, you were – it was – the beginning stages of it being weird to like shake people's hands and everybody there started to like do the fist pump thing. But then all of a sudden I feel like a week later it was like, Holy crap. Yeah. Shit hit the fan. And it's like, all right, now we're in lockdown. Like it, it seemed to ramp up so fast. It didn't give anybody a chance to really adjust quickly. Yeah. I mean, this, this came on so quickly, like you said, almost overnight, you know, just to, you, you saw the news and you kind of wondered, well, is that really going to happen here? How bad is it going to be? And then it just hit us like a tidal wave so fast. Yeah, because there's been other things like SARS or these other things that we've had to deal with that never really – you always heard about these things, like whether they be Ebola or something like that where you like right. – you always heard about it on the news, but there was never – there was always that, ah, that's not going to happen here. Yeah, not that you don't take things seriously, but when that's the – you know, when that's the past experiences we have to live by, you know, you kind of put it in the same category. So, oh, it's probably bad. Okay, you know, it's going to hit some place on the other side of the planet that I'm not even familiar with. And right. Then you started seeing Italy. You're like, well, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. That's not third world. That's not, you know, that's not the middle of Africa either. And then all of a right. sudden Spain and you're like, oh boy, this is coming. Yeah. Cause you never, you can never really believe what China says. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. They never tell us the truth, but no. so you did, you took that with a grain of salt, but then like, you're right. Like once you saw uh, Italy and then Spain and then even like Washington state was the first state in the yeah. U S that kind of got hit with it. When did it start? Like when did it get bad in your area or how bad is it in your area? Uh, we're actually on the downside of the plateau now, just starting that in Connecticut, yeah. uh, thankfully, but, uh, it got bad, you know, I'd say probably about a, about a week after New York started getting hit bad, we started seeing it, you know, trickle into Connecticut in the same way and start ramping up and ramping up quick. Yeah. How did it affect your area? Like, what did they do? Did they make you guys like shut down? Is everything locked down? Yeah. Governor shut all the schools down. And then shortly thereafter, you know, I was, I was debating. And I was like, you know, are they going to do anything? Are they going to shut businesses down? Yeah. Are they going to consider restaurants essential? Thank God they did. Um, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen, but I started feeling guilty. I said, you know what? I better get out ahead of this. And I ended up shutting my dining room down the day before the governor made it mandatory. Wow. So, you know, and I was very nervous doing it. I'm like, just talking to my wife. I said, am I doing the right thing here? And I want to do the right thing. I don't want to feel, have people feel that they're at risk. Right. Well, you know, there's a financial aspect to it as well. And I didn't know. And I, I pulled the trigger. And like I said, thankfully, it was the right thing because the next day it came down anyway. So what, what size dining room do you have? I see 45. Is it like what percentage of your sales is dine-in versus takeout delivery? About 20% dine-in. So that's still significant. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's noticeable. Yeah. Has business shifted at all? Like, I know you obviously can't do dine-in in like the whole social distancing aspect of it. But has business declined or improved or how has it been for you? Well, that's, that was the big thing. We, you know, we were scared. We didn't know what was going to happen there. And, uh, you know, I feel bad saying it because I know so many of my colleagues around the country are in real bad shape right now. Uh, but it, it we're, we've been blown out of the water. You know, the amount of sales we lost from the dining room, losing the dining room, and we lost all of our catering too. You know, we did, you know, a ton of catering Monday yeah. through Friday. So we lost all of that right off the bat. But the increase in takeout, and delivery has just tenfold, just just made up for what we lost. So I mean, we're just nuts right now. I wonder why that is. Why is it? What do you know? Why? Like, what'd you do differently? Do you have any idea? I mean, we didn't do anything special. Uh, I just think it's the, the nature of the business. You know, because we are uh, in a market where it's dominated by families. You know, we are a family pick up dinner, take them home. Yeah. You know, we, smaller dining room, but we've always been a big takeout place. Um, you know, we have more than just pizza on the menu. We have pastas and salads and, and grinders and all that jazz. But, uh, you know, once people, once that's all people could do was pick up food, you know, a lot of the restaurants that aren't suited to that in our area ended up shutting down. They had no choice. Yeah. Were you busy right off the bat or was it like 
not in the beginning. And then like once people kind of got to a shot out of what was going, yeah, shot out of a can. I, mean, we've I always, feel like I've heard that a lot. Yeah, we've always been busy as it is. I mean, this yeah. wasn't something that rocketed us into this stratosphere. We've always been really busy, but this just took it. I mean, now Monday nights are like Friday nights. You know, that's crazy. I mean, that's good for you, but I, it's probably stressful though, even though it's busy. It is. It is because as an operator, you know, no matter how long you've been doing it, you always have that certain level of stress on Friday night. You know, here we go. It's game time. You know, the big night of the week. But now you're doing that seven nights a week. It's uh, you know, it's taxing right. physically and mentally. Plus, like the whole social distancing thing and making sure like the customers are following the guidelines and your employees feel safe. I'm sure that's yeah. an extra stress level added on. It is. It is. You know, you want to you want to make sure you're doing the right things. The last thing you want is some customer to start laying into you because they don't feel you're doing things appropriately. So, you know, I'm very, I'm very aggressive about being in touch with my local health department as well as the state in regards to, you know, exactly what are you looking for today? You know, the governor mandates new things almost every week right now and things constantly change. It's a very fluid situation. So I try to stay on top of it. So, you know, we're in compliance and, you know, really have the appearance of, you know, leading in, in doing the right thing. Yeah. Um, but it's difficult. It's difficult. You know, it's, you never know what tomorrow's going to hold and these things keep changing. Yeah. I don't know about what your area is like, but the governor here, so I'm in Massachusetts. I'm right above you. I'm not too far away. The governor of Massachusetts, I think yesterday or the day before closed down the schools here for the rest of the school year. Yeah. I would imagine that's coming here in Connecticut too. As yeah. of right now, it's May 20th, but I mean, that's right around the corner. And I think, you know, even if they talk about a gradual reopening, I think putting the kids out there in the line of fire is probably the last thing they're going to do. So I can't, yeah, I can imagine they're going back anytime soon. Especially where it's like there's only two months left to school. If it was like right. December or November, maybe there's a different story. But right, and they have all this online learning up and running now, anyway. So yeah, what's the point? You know, I feel like that's good though. Like I feel like the schools were behind, and the teachers out there listening to this is going to kill me. But the schools were behind on this whole internet thing and like being able to learn on the fly. And maybe it's one of the good things that comes out of this is like, if the, if your job or what you're trying to do can be used, technology can be used, maybe that should be used. So it keeps a little bit people, I mean, a little bit more distant in the near future, at least. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it took almost three weeks on our end with my son's schools to get up to speed on that. But I think moving forward in the future, it's a good thing. I mean, yeah. I, I can't imagine we'll see snow days anymore because I know, right. Now that they have this infrastructure in place, what's the point? Just so, go home. Yeah, so I have three daughters and they're all at different levels of school. My youngest is in middle school uh, and my two oldest are in high school. But one of my oldest daughters goes to our town high school and one goes to a tech high school. And the two that go to my town schools had that same issue. Like they weren't ready for this. And it took them like two or three weeks to get the kids iPads and get the computers delivered and make sure every kid has that come up with the plan. But my daughter's tech school which is much more tech savvy than the town school was like the day it happened. They're like, all right, here's your, you already have your iPad. Here's your homework. We have a zoom at 12 o'clock, get ready to go. She's like, what the heck? Why do I have school? The first yeah. day that this happens, you guys get like three weeks off. They were on top of the game. Yeah. <laughs> um, but she's bummed because it's her senior year. So it's so uh, like her last year, like everything is up in arms, your graduation prom and all that stuff. So she's not too, super excited about that. But it just goes to show you that technology is like you need to be uh, have some sort of technology involved in your business. And I'm sure you know a lot of people in the industry just like I do. And I bet you the ones that say they're having a hard time or struggling are the ones that didn't utilize technology and they're trying to figure that out now. Yeah, there's a lot of tools that have been out there for years that have been there for our disposal. And, you know, if you're just trying to jump on now out of a state of panic, it's too late. Yeah, because all of them, they're all like all the tech tools are already behind, right? Like if you're trying to get started, they don't have the bandwidth to help you get started and answer all your tiny right. questions when they have trying to struggle just to keep up with what they have already. Yeah, you're not getting anything done now anyway. Yeah, it's no, crazy. no one helping you right now. No. So you're doing a whole online order only thing? No, we still have we still have uh, phone orders. Really, the majority actually. Really, yeah. People still call in. Um, you know, people are still allowed in the building to come pick up their food. Right. And we, we offer curbside, uh, but you know, this, the state mandates. You know, we have tape marks on the floors, six feet apart, where people are supposed to be. Um, what What do you see the percentage of people who are doing that? More, more, more people coming in than curbside, and I don't oh. know why. And we'll bring it right out to your car. Right. But, but these people come in and they, they stand in, the, in line six feet apart. You know, state says they have to be six feet apart. And we can't have more than five customers in the building at a time. So, you know, and believe it or not, I, 
I mean, I don't know what goes through some people's heads. I mean, this is real. This is real. Look around. Right. And some people, I, I just get the impression that they just don't get it still. Um, so we, we've reached the point where I have to have one of my counter girls, almost like a bouncer. You know, we have a, <laughs> we have a 17 year old girl who works the door who has to man it and say, you know, I've got five people in, you got to wait. You're next. Yeah. You, know, you see and, that, you see that doing that at grocery stores, having somebody outside, like, all right, as soon as somebody leaves, you can go in next. Yeah. Cause people will just, I mean, they, they didn't care. They would what pile the, in 25 what, people. What the hell is wrong with people where they can't like, they don't understand that they yeah. like, you're a grown ass man. You got to figure it out. Like you, you should know that you can't go in there when there's other people in there. Don't be rude. Like you're, the, is funny. you're the effing reason that I'm stuck in the house. Cause you're an idiot. So we all got to be stuck in the house because you're a dumbass. Like get your shit together and learn to social distance and put your effing mask on because if you did that, we could all go out. Right. Actually, the, one, of my, one of my neighbors in the neighboring business in the building, she took pictures uh, last week on Friday. It was nice out and uh, people's habits are now starting to change and they're starting to get, you know, get up to speed with the program. And one of the things has, been, has always been, you know, in my opinion, it's just American, it's true Americana. Dad's, when they order pizza on a Friday night, we'll tell them, okay, that'll be 35 minutes. Well, dad's there in five minutes. Oh my God. <laughs> and, he has, and, and every dad knows it's the, it's the common dad move. Yeah. I've got time for three beers. <laughs> <laughs> right. So now what we saw, my neighbor, like I said, took a picture. There was groups of cars in the parking lot with dads all outside drinking beers. Oh my God. <laughs> shooting the bull from six feet away. That's funny. Waiting for their orders. So. You know, people are slowly adapting. Yeah. I think now that you say that, like, because Friday, like, to me, so you're in the, you know, people who used to go to work Monday through Friday, now they're home, and it, some of them aren't working at all. Some of them are working, um, you know, via Zoom or something like that. Um, but for most of us, it's like the routine of the regular day, we, we used to have this gone. Like, our kids don't go to school Monday through Friday. We're always home. Every day seems like the same day. That's probably why you're seeing a bump in Monday, Tuesdays being busy because we don't, like, so we probably don't even know what day it is. We probably think it's Friday and we're ordering pizza and it's Wednesday. Yep. So that's why you have to be prepared every single day. It's changed the way we have to do things. You know, it's changed uh, our prep, our ordering. You know, I've had to work with my vendors just to, you know, constantly keep getting more and more product out there on a much greater frequency now. But, you know, we're adapting. Yeah. Has there been any consistency to the change? Like, do you see Mondays are busier now or is it just like every day could be a Friday? Every day could be a Friday. So it's yeah. random. Yeah. We've had, uh, we've had up staffing in the kitchen. I mean, it's just, you know, we have to be prepared for it. Yeah. Somebody messaged me the other day on Facebook. They said, Hey, uh, let me ask you a question, Bruce. They, everybody who's like wants to support restaurants and local businesses is pushing this whole uh, great American takeout day. And they're like, I love it but they're all pushing it to go on Friday, Saturday nights when it's, we're already kind of stressed out and pushed. We don't need that. Yeah. And like, he's like, can you help us get the word out that maybe we should do it on a Monday or Tuesday night? Because, you know, as much as I do love people supporting us and I love the business, the extra stress it puts on our staff is us is right. ultimately making it leading us to make more mistakes. And like the customers aren't happy. He's like, yeah, is there anything we can do about that? Give it to us when we need it, not on Friday and Saturday. So if you're out there listening and you want to do these great American takeouts and support local restaurants, do it Monday through Wednesday. Yes. And don't just do it when this, uh, until this is over. Do it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, sp leading up to that, what do you think is going to happen in the future? Like, what do you think, when do you think, or do you think, in your opinion, that this has led us to new habits? And, you know, I don't know if we'll go back to the way it was. That's that's the difficult part right now, and that's the part that I'm really having personal difficulty with trying to anticipate what that new normal is going to be after this current normal. Right. Um, you know, every state is different, but when they do say, "Okay, it's go time," initially I thought, "Oh, people are you know we're going to get swarmed. People are going to be itching to get back out." But the more I start thinking about it, I'm starting to think just the opposite. I don't think a lot of people are going to be comfortable right away. Yeah. Um, you know, until there's you know a definitive vaccine out there. I don't think people, I don't think it's going to be the same. I really don't. And then, you know, I mean, we're just seeing some states start to reopen right now. So in a couple of weeks, we'll have a better picture of what's going to happen. But what happens if these numbers start ramping back up again? You know, right. we're going to get shut down all over again. You know, we're going to try it. It's not going to work. We could get shut down all over again. We could be in this cycle for a while. So, you know, it's led me to start thinking about some potential radical changes you know i i don't know what i'm going to do yet but i have considered the idea of 
renovating and just getting rid of my dining room altogether and going strictly takeout. I mean, I, I don't know if it's the right idea, but I, you know, I want to be ahead of the curve, not behind it. And, you know, we'll see what happens over the next few weeks, but it's, it's an idea that's you know on the table. Yeah, for sure. I think it's going to de- determine like if there is a second wave, first of all, right? Like if we do, if we can't come up, like they say a vaccine is going to take what, 12 to 18 months they're saying yeah. before there's like a real vaccine, like a, the flu shot that you can take and not get this virus. But then what happens is what happens if something happens like this again, you know, like, right. This isn't the first virus that we've heard of. Like we mentioned before, we had Ebola, we had SARS, we had uh, H1N1 flu, something like that. Um, that this isn't the first one. This is just seems to be the first one that is easily spreadable where you don't really know you're spreading it and you don't really know you have it. Yeah. You know, I saw a poll about two weeks ago in regards to sporting events and people said it was 70% of people said they would not attend a sporting event, a live event in person until there was a vaccine. And if that's the general consensus amongst the public with sporting events, I have to assume that it's going to be the same with dining and restaurants when you have groups of four or six, eight people all sitting together side by side. Yeah. Same thing. So, yeah, I think you're right about that because I, I was saying this, I think I mentioned this yesterday when we did our live show, Donald Burns, uh, who put a poll out there on Twitter and he said, Hey, if, if restaurants reopen, and I think he put like May 4th as the date, which is kind of early. Um, but this was two weeks ago. So it was like a month away. If the restaurants open and they're allowed to have people dine in, would you feel comfortable going to a restaurant? And 70% of the people said no. No, yeah, there you go. So it was a huge, and it was like four or 5,000 people total took that between Facebook and Twitter. And 70% of the people said no. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, you know what? I think it really depends on that vaccine coming in. And when we don't have to like, social distance or wear masks i think it's going to be until then that people feel comfortable going to restaurants and i don't know if it's because they think they're going to get sick but like you go to a restaurant like if you go out to eat with your wife or your kids it's not just about the food it's about the experience of being in that environment of the restaurant and if you look across the way you see everybody at that table wearing masks and they're sick they're 13 feet apart from you it makes it just uncomfortable yeah it's nervousness and you don't want to do that especially with kids I'd rather just eat in my house. Like, I, all right, we don't wear a mask in my house. We're all kind of hanging out. Like, there's no, you know, if we all get the virus together, we all get the virus together. What are you going to do? But, like, there's no awkwardness of that. I was actually on a, uh, on a call this morning with our state senator, uh, Richard Blumenthal, and along with our restaurant association. And he made a very good point that he's going to make it a personal agenda item of his own to get out there once we get the all clear and try to hit as many restaurants as he can with his family just to help give that to help give our industry that boost of confidence you know let people see him there and maybe that will give some sense of okay well if he's okay with it then maybe it's safe for us to start doing it is it going to help i don't know but you know all partisan beliefs aside it was nice to see someone do something like that to try to help ease the ease the panic in the in the general public yeah but i think it, that, that's the, no because the complete opposite like as soon as that rudy the Rudy guy that got the NBA player got it right. And they closed the NBA. That's kind of when it all hit. Yeah. So it's going to take somebody like that with a high profile that people trust to do the complete opposite, which is like, all right, he's doing it. I think we're okay to do it now ourselves. Yeah. There was a lot more people in that poll that I saw that were like had health issues, you know, like I think there's a lot of people with asthma or some sort of respiratory issue that they don't want to catch it. And they're just really nervous about that. So that's another issue. I mean, why tempt fate? Just, you know, it's not worth it. Yeah, it's not worth it, and I don't blame people one bit. But the, in good news, though, there was also I th- I did I saw a poll from Stanford University did a poll in San Clemente, California. They they randomly polled, not polled, tested twenty two hundred people for the coronavirus, and they said they had a fifty percent higher amount of people who actually have it or had it than they thought. So what they th- what their thought process is is that there's a f- lot more people that have this than we think have it, and the mortality rate is much lower than we think it is or we have right now because of the lack of testing that we have. And if that's the case, if we do get rapid rapid testing up and like we realize that like you know me and you have had it already, and we didn't even know it, you know <laughs> that may be that may be a good sign to get the economy going and like hit, and make people feel more comfortable if we get more data like that. But we'll have to see one with time. Only time. That would be nice. I would, I would. I would love to hear that. I've already had it and didn't know it. That'd I know, right? Godsend. 
I, I mean, who knows? Because they say like the, the thing about this is like they don't know like the symptoms are random. Like someone someone could get deathly ill and someone could have it and like just have very mild symptoms or not even be they may even be asymptomatic. Yeah. I have a friend that lives in New York City and was positive, but he just lost his taste and his smell, nothing else. And really? Tested positive a few weeks, it went away and he's fine. That's and crazy. Do they know if you can get it again? From what I've heard, they don't know yet. I mean, a lot of people say they don't think so, but they're not ruling it out. Yeah. What about any of your employees? Any of your employees or their families? Have anybody had it in your area that you know uh, of? It hasn't, it hasn't hit that close to home, fortunately. That's good. Hopefully it stays that way. Do any of your employees feel like didn't want to work because of this? No. <laughs> no, I was actually anticipating that, but just the opposite. My guys, you know, my kitchen guys came to me right away and said, look, we're not shutting down, right? And I said, no, we're going. They said, okay, we, we don't want to be laid off. We want to work. I said, don't, don't, don't you worry about that. We're, <laughs> we're, all right. But yeah, no, they, they're just the opposite. They don't want to be, they don't want to be out of work. They don't want to be cooped up at home. Nothing to do. They, they want to be there. So that's good. Fortunate in that regard. What's your kitchen layout look like? Do they have to work six feet apart? That is, that's my biggest, my biggest concern because, you know, there's one of our stations in the kitchen there's two guys that are just bumping elbows. Yeah. You know, all of us, you know, when it's crazy, you're all running past one another. It's, yeah. it's, there's no six feet. And as of this past Monday, now, uh, Connecticut's governor Lamont issued an executive order saying that anyone that can't maintain social distancing in public should be wearing masks. So all my counter girls are wearing it, but unfortunately, you know, we're a small enclosed kitchen, you know, with all of those, all those ovens back there and grills, it's just, you know, it's over hundred degrees in the kitchen at all times. We, you can't put a mask on for more than two seconds without breathing. So right. nobody, nobody can wear a mask in the kitchen and, and survive. So, you know, we're just washing, 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 you know, trying to stay away from each other as much as possible. But, you know, I, I know what people do when they're there. It's when they're not there. You know, right. When my guys are in the building, you know, we're all over one another, but you know, I, I hope when they go home that they're, you know, using the same care and caution. But, I mean, it's hard to track that though, right? Yeah. You don't know. You don't know, but we've been lucky so far. And, you know, as we see the, the trend starting to change a little bit, heading down gradually, uh, you know, it's, it's encouraging that hopefully maybe we can dodge that bullet, but you know, I would hate for something to happen. Right. What was the peak for you and where you are? Uh, I, th I think what they're saying it was last week, near the end of last week. Uh, so, it I mean, was, it was I mean, flattened out and now we're starting to see a, a decline every day. Yeah. I hope it's the case where, you know, once they do get testing out to everybody, we, we find that a lot more people than we thought had it. And it's not as deadly as we yeah. assumed. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that's what we're definitely going to see, but you know, the, the rates are going to go down. The percentage rates are going to go down dramatically, obviously, once we see all the people that had it and were asymptomatic, but at the same time, when you see those big clusters of numbers of deaths all at one time, you know, yeah, that, that stops traffic and that's mind boggling. But when you consider this is a new thing and there's no vaccination and there's no antibodies yet, it makes sense that it's going to have that impact on those, those that are at risk. Right. Now, I know you used to do a lot of community marketing on our last podcast. You talked about that. That's probably not happening right now unless it is. But I mean, yeah. what do you, you don't, you, it sounds like you don't really need to do any marketing get the word out there, but are you still creating content and putting it out there to like uh, help your customers understand the process and what you're doing? I've always tried to be pretty good with uh, social media content, but unfortunately right now I've, I've had to kind of pull back on it a little bit just because the days right now, you know, we don't even know what day it is and, you know, we're just running, burning the candle at both ends right now. So unfortunately that has uh, gotten pushed to the back burner a little bit, but uh, not for lack of, you know, wanting to do it, just yeah. lack of hours in the day. And, you know, it's hard to come up with social media content at, at midnight after you've been there all day <laughs> or even like if you don't need the business i get i guess you do want to educate your customer and like realize it but if you're there or like the content you're thinking about creating is like sometimes you're probably like i don't even know what to create let me just worry about that tomorrow and then tomorrow comes you're in the kitchen and working on the staff and everything it's true that's what's happening but you know on the other side of that coin right now we're seeing a lot of uh interaction from customers themselves and not just our restaurant but every restaurant everyone's getting takeout every night yeah. of the, everyone's putting pictures online you know there, <laughs> there's these new community groups on facebook now that are just focused on takeout restaurants in the community and everyone puts up their pictures of where they got takeout from how wonderful it was go support these people they're working so hard yada yada 
And uh, so, I mean, we're seeing a, a ton of that. So that's really helping fill that void where I'm not able to do it right now. I mean, that's the name of the game, right? That's ultimately what you want to do anyway. You ultimately, the, the best marketing is word of mouth marketing. How we do that in 2020 is people talk about your business on social media for you. Yep. That's the ultimate goal. So if that's happening already, I mean, that's a silver lining. I mean, isn't that the whole, the whole purpose of our marketing in general, when we do social media marketing, our pictures, it's just to generate conversation, you know? Exactly. Like get people to share it. Now they're, you're, you're not even having to post it for them to share it. They're doing it totally on their own. Yep. But I think people understand how hard, like I finally feel like people understand how hard it is to work in the restaurant. Maybe they don't actually, maybe they don't know how hard it is to work. Cause I was talking to uh, Mike from Tony <laughs> Long Long the other day. Yeah. And then he was saying like, he still gets complaints. And I'm like, how could you ever leave a one star review or complain about your order to the public? I understand like if your order is wrong, calling you and being like, Hey, my, I got something messed up, but like, why would you ever go to Yelp or go to Google or go on Facebook and complain about a restaurant order if today, like the light, the time we're living in right now, you're, you're an asshole. If you do that. Yeah. Not a good time for that. You gotta, gotta be a little more, a little more sensible right now. Yeah. Why the hell would anybody do that? What kind of person are you? Be glad you have anything right now because we're, you know, we're not in the same line of fire that healthcare workers are, but right. you know, when we're staying at home, not going out there, not being in harm's way every day, we still are seven days a week. Yeah. I mean, like you said, you don't know That's what people fine. do. You don't know what your cooks do when they go home, let alone what the customers are doing. And they're only in your business for a few minutes. And there's hundreds of new customers coming in every single day. Yeah. Yeah. And these people come in, you know, in their full hazmat suits, you know, how, how do you think we feel? You're in right. and out in five minutes in your hazmat suit and, you know, we're there and, you know, t-shirts all day long. Right. You know? Are you in the kitchen, like back in the kitchen, like working there a lot? Oh yeah. I got, you know, just when you, just when you feel like you're out, they pull you back in. I know. Cause the last time we talked to you, we were like, oh, I, 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 I'm lucky. I have a good staff that can manage it, but I'm sure this is just a different time. It's a different time right now. It's all hands yeah. on. You need to be there just support, probably just to be supportive in like uh, for the the morale. I'm sure. Yeah, I have a I have a friend and colleague who has taken the opposite approach that I just I can't, I can't do it. He's just he won't even go in the restaurant when it's open. He goes in in the morning, does paperwork, and then leaves. Really? So you know, I I understand you're doing that. You know, you're you're concerned about your family. It's not that the rest of us aren't concerned about our families, but you know, if I'm gonna sub subject my guys to that potential danger. You know, I'm going to be right there with them. I know you have two small kids though. What do you do with like, do you like, are you staying away from them or what do you, how do you protect yourself at home? Life is normal here. I mean, they haven't, my wife has the counter. They haven't left the house in 43 days now, Wow. So, you know, but when I come home, it's, you know, everything gets stripped off right into the laundry and I shower right away. You know, I haven't had any symptoms of anything whatsoever. You know, I, know. I don't go anywhere besides work and home. So, right. you know, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. God, if anything would happen, I would feel absolutely horrible. I know, right? I'm, you know, it's, it's but what, the, that's the don't. dilemma, though. What do you, you, what do you, you can't, I guess I don't, I, I never want to live my, my life based on fear. I mean, I want to have safe practices and I want to, um, you know, mitigate the risk as much as I can, but I don't want to live my life based on fear and like hunker down and never leave the house because there's something on the news that, that says yeah. like, one bad article or whatever it is you know there's the news is always spreading everything that's bad in the world it gets to you though you totally know? yeah you know i sit there at night wondering am i doing the right thing and you just got to get up and go and do it again when you say you ask yourself if you're doing the right thing like what do you mean like going into the, and, and being open going into the restaurant myself yeah yeah it's like because of your family of course yeah yeah you know you god forbid anything were to happen you know you never know i mean i, I don't know I'm, i don't know it's it's tough it's, it's a tough, but what do you do close then? Like, and then your employees are out of work and then like, who knows if you can ever get back to business that you lost when you reopen? Like, that's like, I'm sure the part of the dilemma too. Right. You know, and I got my guys begging me, please don't close, don't close, don't close. I said, you know, we're, we're not, you know, and hopefully we're past, we're past the worst of us now. And we're just kind of in a, in a period of maintaining our same new behavior. Right. You know, and hopefully the risk goes down incrementally day by day, but you know, knock on wood, it's been, We've been lucky so far. So did you have to apply for any of those government grants or loans? I passed on that for the time being. Yeah. Uh, like I said, there's so many of our colleagues out there right now that are in very dire straits. Uh, I'm in no need to take any free money right now. That's good. I'm, that's good that you're uh, good that you're in a position that you don't need it. Yeah. You're lucky. The community is supporting you well. Yeah. Yeah. We've been very, very blessed in that regard. Well, it was awesome talking to you, Mike. Where can people go check you out? They want to follow you or say hello or ask you a question. I mean, obviously you're doing some cool stuff. 
Yeah, no, we try to. Thank you. Uh, they can follow me on Facebook at Mike Andro or on Instagram at pizza underscore boss underscore 27X. And the restaurant is E and D Pizza Company. So we're out there plugging away, trying to stay safe day by day. It's a, it's literally like a new day. Every it's like two opposites, right? Like every day is the same, but every day is a new day with new challenges. Let me ask you, have you, have you spoken to anyone that's seen any challenges uh, yet with supply chain issues? Um, Not yet. And I talked to a few distributors that we work with and they're saying that they're may not see anything happening. That's going to be that drastic. Uh, but okay. I did get a message from someone the other day that says the trucking industry is having some delays. Like they just started to see a little bit of delay from the trucking industry, which may cause delays. But as of right now, no. Um, yeah, that's one of the problems with my produce. My produce vendor has has seen trucking delays. Yeah. So they've, they've had shortages. I'm hoping that, you know, like you said in your area. So in Boston, I don't know if we're, I don't know if we've passed the peak yet. I feel like we haven't seen a dip. We're, we're kind of plateauing. Like it's not getting worse, but it's not really getting better. Okay. Well, um, I know, yeah. New York, you're New York seen a little bit of a dip. You're going down a little bit. Obviously California has seen a, a little bit of a decline. So I'm hoping that, you know, the worst is past us. So if we've gotten this far without a huge delay in the supply chain, maybe if we do see one, it won't be that bad. Well, I know now that we're seeing some of the uh, positive tests ramping up in some of the meat processing facilities, you know, I know Smithfield shut down. Yeah. And Tyson just shut down yesterday. So, you know, we're trying to keep an eye on that right now and, you know, stay in good with the vendors because they have, we've already seen it with our produce where they've had to pick and choose which who customer, to, yeah. who orders are going to fulfill and who they're going to say no to. So, and obviously they're going by who pays, right? Well, you want to make sure you're on the uh, <laughs> yeah. on their good side, you know, right? Like, you're not gonna if you're on a, if you're on a third, if you're a sixty days out, they're definitely not gonna deliver you pros. No, wow, so you better you get know, your shit together. People are watching that plan accordingly. You know, make yeah. sure you're on their on the good list. Are you still getting produce? I am. Uh, unfortunately, there are some restaurants that are being told we're out of things because they're sending it to me instead. Right. Um, because you know we have we've built relationships. That's fine. You know, yeah, that's what problems with payment. That's important. You know, my, my big primary vendor for food too has now started to express not concern yet, but they're just trying to get ahead of the curve if there yeah. is issue with, uh, with some of the meat and not getting there. Um, they're anticipating there's going to be some kind of problem because, you know, those are big facilities that serve a lot of the country. I guess the main thing for you is just flour, right? Like flour and sauce and cheese. Like if long as you can get those, those, that's like your bare minimum. Everything else is like, you know what, if we can't sell chicken this week, not a huge deal. I mean, it's a big deal, but not a huge deal as if you can't get right. flour. Right. Right. And that and we've had no issues with that. Yeah. I think that's the main concern of people, especially like in our industry. I think that if you can't get steak or you can't get uh, tomatoes, like as long as you can have your pizza and make a couple variations with that, you should be able to skate by. Right. Although you the customers, a, who knows? And you can't get a five pound bag in the store, but you know, we yeah. can get a ton delivered every week on a truck. So <laughs> I know, right? Well, a lot of the vendors, so I work with two vendors, um, two distributors, and they're selling direct to consumer because they see the shortage of I've know, seen that now, yeah. products in the grocery store. So they're just like, you know, we have these products on sale. We might as well just ship, just do curbside or delivery ourselves. Might as well. I guess if you can do it, right? The problem is like, there's like a $400 minimum order. Who's going to order $400 worth of chicken? Yeah, that's a little, little too much to eat in the house, you know. <laughs> you need like a whole not, separate not fridge just for that. Not everyone's a Brady Bunch. Yeah, no kidding, um, right? Well, you know, they have to adapt too, just like restaurants do, because they're losing, you know, they're losing restaurants left and right. So they've yeah. got to be creative with their, you know, their business model at the, at the moment too. So Yeah, restaurants, it, are, sit down restaurants, like sit down, dine in restaurants have been just devastated because that's, the, they're, the, the environment is what you went there for. And that's just completely gone. Yeah, I was talking to one of my vendors the other day, and he said, you know, they're anticipating when all this comes back, uh, they're planning on losing one third of their sit-down restaurants for good. Wow, and that's uh, that's a staggering number. Yes, especially when you're a restaurant owner, like you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't run a bad business. You didn't do right. I mean, maybe you did because you didn't pivot quickly or like figure it out, but like you didn't like do anything to make your business have to close for the most part. You were told you have cuisine, to close. Yeah. yeah. Cuisine doesn't lend to takeout. I mean, there's only so much these guys can do. Like you said, they weren't doing anything wrong. You know, when you get hit by something like this, it's, it's a real gut punch, you know? Yeah. 
So, well, I think what happened was there, so there's a really high end steakhouse in my area. If I said, I'm not going to say the name of it because if I said the name, you'd probably heard of it, but I hear radio commercials of them be like, yeah, you can get steak takeout, but I'm not going to get a $50 steak takeout. Right. Right. Like I'm I, not gonna appreciate, do that. I appreciate the offer, but I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Like I'm not going to spend $200 to eat in my dining room with my kids, like <laughs> out of styrofoam <laughs> containers. Right. What am when I going to do cold, that for? When it's cold, when it gets there on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I appreciate it, but like you need to change your business model completely and like maybe come up with a whole new menu of what you can sell. That's more affordable, but put your culinary spin on it. This is just scrambling. Places are scrambling. It's, yeah. it's tough. You said, you know, some, some will adapt and make it others. Well, we'll see what happens. Right. I guess. Yes. Yes. We'll, have to come back and do the show. Yeah, we'll do a show a year from now and see like, we'll do a re re like a, uh, what, what was the last year? Like, what does it look like now? It'll be great if we can look back on this and just say, well, that was, that was crazy. And now we're past it. And it'll be nice if this is a, you know, something that's in the past and not so ongoing. Yes. Or like doesn't happen again in the future. Hopefully this is a once in a lifetime thing. Right. All right, Mike, it was cool talking to you. I appreciate you joining me on the podcast. Always pleasure. Pleasure as always. Thank you. We'll, we'll link up all your social and your website and everything on, uh, on the show notes for this episode. Head over to smartpiecemarketing.com. All right, Bruce. Thanks. Thanks, Mike.